Okay, so we are live now. Wait, 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 Jigar. Not yet. You showed me the notification. We are live now, Jigar. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I uh, hope you're all doing very well today. Uh, myself, Jigar Desai, I'm the operation head for uh, RG International, the only and best visa consultation uh, consultancy in uh, Surat and across Pan India. Today we have, uh, you know, Mr. Rajiv Soni, the uh, owner and founder of RG International. And Hello. along with that, along with that, we have Mr. Jay Ahir, India representative for University of Northern British Columbia. Uh, welcome, Jay Bhai. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Jigar Bhai. And thank you very much, Rajiv Bhai and uh, all uh, team members, you know, for organizing such thank a you. session. I hope the session would be helpful for all the students. Yes. I request you, uh, uh, Mr. Chai, to, you know, uh, take it forward. And if you would like to, you know, uh, give us a presentation, you may share the screen. And you can give us uh, information about the British Columbia region, uh, as sure. well as the university programs and possibly uh, everything that uh, one student has to know to study in right. Canada. Yes. Definitely will do that, Jigabai. Thank you very much. I hope uh, my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Perfect. So hello, everyone. As uh, Jigar introduced me, uh, I'm, my name is Jay. I'm the marketing manager with UNBC. So you might be seeing you know, many of the institutions in Canada. Now, what's the difference between UNBC and other universities? You will definitely be able to know after this presentation. So UNBC stands for University of Northern British Columbia, one of the public and research intensive universities, I would say, in Canada. So students, there are like a total of 96 universities and colleges in Canada, out of which 16 is in British Columbia, just one in Northern British Columbia. Now I'm sure, uh, you know, you guys must be somewhere around from Gujarat region uh, attending the session today. So I'll be able to give you a local example here again. What is Prince George? Definitely if someone asks you, you know, which are the three biggest cities of Gujarat, surely the answer would be Ahmedabad, Surat and Vadodara. But what if someone asks, you know, the biggest city of Saurashtra region? I'm sure the answer would be the Rajkot, right? So we all know Rajkot is not a small city, but though it's not counted in biggest cities of Gujarat, same way it's in British Columbia. Vancouver definitely is one of the biggest cities of British Columbia, but when it comes to Prince George, that's the hub of Northern British Columbia. So we do have various campuses throughout Northern British Columbia, but our main campus would be in Prince George city the one which is open for international students. So students, this is Prince George City. Everything you guys can see in dark, that is UNBC. That's our main campus. And including the forest on the right-hand side corner, even that's the part of the campus. If we talk about climate first, definitely in winter, you guys can expect till minus eight degrees Celsius, but in summer it can also go till 25 degrees Celsius. So basically, if you love snowfall, definitely you will enjoy your time at UNBC. And also if you love forest walks, even you would enjoy your time at UNBC though. If you are the love for adventures, definitely you are going to be in love with Prince George City. If you consider the geographical location of Prince George City, it's exactly in middle of Northern British Columbia. So on one end, you'll be able to find glaciers. On the other hand, you'll be able to find forests, rivers, lakes. So basically it's surrounded by nature and there are plenty of spaces to do any of the adventures activity you like to do. So we do have 299 days of sunshine in Prince George. And students, this is the small map of Prince George city. It's also known as the 20 minute city. Now, whenever I say, you know, a 20 minute city, there is always a big question mark amongst all the students. And definitely it should be that if it's a 20 minute city, you know, how would be the job opportunities? What will there be any jobs or not? So definitely we'll discuss that today. As I said, it's the hub of Northern British Columbia. We are not that small city as well. We do have a population of more than 80,000 people over there. So definitely, you know, we'll be answering what is an average wage rate, what are the opportunities available, which are the industries over there and how the future of British Columbia looks like. So students, this is the graph from British Columbian government. They have declared a plan for the decade. So as per the government's plan over there, they are expecting at least 84,000 job openings each year till 2029. 
So 84,000 is the list. That's a uh, minimum amount, but it, uh, expectations are going higher as the time passes till 87,000, 89,000. Now, when I say 84,000 job openings in British Columbia, definitely more than 60% of the jobs would be in these five industries. Healthcare, science and technology, retail trade, accommodation and food services, and educational services. UNBC itself is one of the biggest employer of British Columbia, and that would definitely open your uh, you know, opportunities for on-campus jobs as well. And we recently got awarded for the same. 2021 top employer of British Columbia is UNBC. Now, just to help you guys understand you know, previous graphs a bit easily and in a simple language, Let's say, for example, uh, you know, as per the British Columbian government's plan, they are expecting at least 8,61,000 job openings by 2029, definitely throughout British Columbia. When they have figured out this figure, they've also figured out how they will be filling out these positions. And they've given 56% to youngsters joining the workforce. We can consider them as locals. They've given 31% to immigrants. Definitely, you as an international student would be an immigrant and they've given 8% to migrants from other provinces. Now, even after all this detailed planning students, government is still not sure how they'll be filling out the supply gap of 6%, which is more than 50,000 jobs over there. So as far as opportunities in British Columbia are concerned, you guys definitely have the opportunity to grab those 31%, as well as the supply gap of 6%, that is more than 50,000 jobs in British Columbia. So this is a beautiful campus, students. And in the first image, till your eyes can see, that is UNBC. Yes, you heard it right. All those forest region, it's not the government property. That's the property of UNBC and a part of our Prince George campus. And now you might be thinking, you know, what we'll be doing in those forest regions? What's the use of those regions? As I said, we are a research intensive university. Most of the faculties are being given certain regions for their experiments, for their research purpose, and most of the student activities would be taking place in those regions. Now, just to help you guys understand uh, our campus and our location a bit in detail, this is a short video. I hope you guys enjoy the same. So I'll just make sure uh, the audio is on. Yes. You can, if you can once play the yes, the audio is on. Yes. Audible, yes. University of Northern British Columbia, where we are proud to be one of Canada's best small universities. UNBC stands out in Western Canada as an exceptional place to learn, grow, and find the path that's right for you. For 12 straight years, Maclean's Magazine has ranked UNBC in the top three of the best small universities in Canada. UNBC also sits in the top 5% of best universities worldwide, according to Times Higher Education. Our main campus is located in Prince George, on the traditional territory of the Claytley Tenay First Nation. We serve a region that includes the traditional territories of numerous diverse First Nations, with campuses in Quinell, Fort St. John, Terrace, Prince Rupert, and Gitwinsil. It is in the beautiful landscape that is Northern British Columbia that our values of community, discovery, and student success emerge. UNBC is a community that makes your experience unique. Because we have a small student population, we are personal in nature. You are able to build close connections with your professors and easily access the supports and services you need to thrive as a UNBC student. We are committed to the discovery of local solutions that have global impact. Solutions that you can be a part of. As early as your first year, you can contribute to groundbreaking research that makes a difference in your community and around the world. Students past and present have also voted UNBC as the best small university in Western Canada for mental health and wellness support for four straight years and we continually rank high in the categories of student awards and overall student satisfaction. We have risen to the top of our class by focusing on you, the student. At UNBC, you are not just a number. You will be a part of a community, your community. You will be a part of something exceptional in a place like no other. Welcome to UNBC.
this looks amazing jai bhai i hope uh, you know definitely it's a beautiful place and uh, you know a campus <laughs> yes, is a lovely so huge. campus uh, yeah camp. it's really it's really a huge campus and you know uh, the unique thing about our campus will come to that on a later part so this is uh, unbc students in fall definitely it's looking beautiful now here on the left hand side corner which you guys can see that's our on campus accommodation and this is our main campus Wow. Now the unique thing is, you might have seen, you know, many buildings in our campuses. The unique part is each and every building you see over there, they are interconnected, right? That oh, means right. if you wanted to go from block A to block D, you do not need to come out of the campus. They have made interconnected ways. Wow. Now, again, wow. giving you a local example here, students, right? The only institute in India, I guess, uh, you know, having an interconnected campus. Anyone? Any idea? any students they can drop it in chat box anyone the does anyone know which campus in india does have the interconnectivity with each uh, other buildings. building buildings okay well seems like no one knows about it then please All right. uh, I tell would, us i would i would help you guys with that that's yeah. iim ahmedabad so um, i'm sure you might have seen uh, you know if you are from amtabar definitely you would know if not then uh, definitely whenever you get chance please do have a look or you can definitely google it so it's the same uh, you know pattern i would say now uh, talking about reputation of the university students definitely if we talk about on paper reputation as per maclin's ranking uh, we are coming in top 3 in canada for 12 consecutive years as per research info source qm this is falling under canada's top 50 research universities as per world university ranking we are falling under top 5% worldwide and as per times higher education qmbc is falling in top 250 young universities worldwide now the great part is out of this 250 worldwide there are only three universities of canada and one of them is qmbc so this was on paper reputation now talking about off paper reputation i'm sure you guys know the lady in the golden dress here yes, certainly so, certainly right queen elizabeth yes. so unbc is the only university who invited queen elizabeth for the inauguration and she was there wow. right now she is not any of the bollywood or hollywood celebrity you know when you would pay like 25 30 good crores they'll make it a short visit when the personality like queen elizabeth visits the university we can definitely assume what would be the reputation and what would be the level of the university over there true so we do have students from more than 60 different countries uh, students and we generally celebrate all their cultural activities if i talk about india holi and diwali are been celebrated at unbc and now the major part i guess for many of the students i'm sure you guys must be comparing different institutions uh, you know by the fees or by the course definitely now whenever you are comparing with the fees specifically right i would like to update you guys here right that always compare with the right category whenever you have been asked you know why this let's say for example bachelor's of commerce you might be getting bachelor's of commerce in 15000 canadian dollars as well 18000 dollars as well why to pay more right there is always a difference of category again if i give you guys a local example here mba can be done from iim mba can be done from any of the gujarat university mba can be done from parul university as well now did we ever compare parul with iim i would no. say no no right because we are locals here we know the value which iim shares what parul shares definitely everyone is strong in their own regions right but again coming to the categories there are four different types of categories in british columbia medical research intensive teaching vocational right if i talk about medical there is only one provider in british columbia there is university of british columbia if i talk about research intensive university there are only four providers in british columbia university of british columbia simon fraser university university of victoria and us that is unbc each and every institute you might have heard or seen somewhere in british columbia they'll be falling under teaching or vocational category now whenever you are comparing any of the institutes definitely make sure you are comparing with the right category as i gave you guys the example right whenever you are comparing if you compare parul and iim definitely there is no comparison even if we talk about entry requirements if we talk about fees section the same thing is here now these are just the name medical research teaching vocational what exactly the difference would make for students 
that is the reputation of the university right i'm sure the average pay rate you might have heard in canada would be 12 dollars an hour 15 dollars an hour let's say 18 20 dollars an hour we do have a record till date none of our graduates are getting below 35 dollars an hour that's the difference right additionally you might see you know placement programs uh, throughout many of the other institutions we do not have placement programs we do have career fairs now what's the difference between placement programs and career fairs the difference is in a placement program an employer would have 100 or 200 options in front of them they'll be taking interviews of 100 students they'll be selecting 15 students but in a career fair you as a student would be having 15 to 20 different options of employers in front of you employers like coca cola pepsi apple right they all visit uh, our career fairs they recruit students from there so we do have career fairs twice a year and we do have a record that 87% of our students are able to find the job within three months of the graduation. So these are all the differences. So whenever you guys compare any of the other institutions, always make sure you know comparing with the right category. And I hope this would be helpful. And uh, you know, uh, it's not just about the fees. Fees definitely matters a lot for uh, you know financial support. But if you are, uh, you know, if your priorities are different, then definitely you should have a look. So we do have one is to eight faculty to student ratio and we do have more than 3,500 students. Average first year class size would be 62. Again, depending on the program uh, you guys are applying. So UNBC is Canada's one of the only green university. And uh, you know, just to give you a quick example here, our biology plant uses the uh, local woods uh, and that has helped us reducing fossil fuel consumption by 85%. Definitely, as we are recruiting for bachelor's degree students, I'm sure you would be having some expectations from your college life, right? That should be an annual function. That should be a sports event at the end of the year. Surely you guys would not miss the same at UNBC. You might have seen in video as well. Yeah, that's a different story. There'll be no cricket, no volleyball-like sports, but there'll be different sports where you'll be able to participate over there. Best part for you guys, Northern Sports Center. What does this include? This has two squash courts, 50 hours a week drop-in fitness classes, two indoor soccer field, three gym, two 80-meter three-lane indoor track, which is the biggest in British Columbia, six cardio and strength training fitness zones. All of this would be completely free for all UNBC students throughout their journey at UNBC. Now, we definitely make sure, you know, our students are socially active. And we do have hundreds of clubs, maybe South Asian Student Society, or let's say Indian Students Club, Bachelors of Commerce Club, just to make sure, you know, the week is quite busy and you guys are enjoying your time at UNBC over there. Definitely, once you go from here to Canada, how about if you get the opportunity to go abroad from Canada as well? Now, as I said earlier, we are a research intensive university. It's not necessary, you know, that all the research would be done on campus or in the forest uh, besides the campus. You might need to go out of the city. You might need to go out of the province or let's say for some time out of the country as well. Last to last year, our students and team went to Africa for research purpose. Before that, they went to Italy for research purpose. Now, one big thing for any of the research oriented student is, if you want to be a part of a research team, definitely you would at least need graduation, right? But UNBC is the only university who gives this opportunity that if you want to be a part of the research team, you can be part of the research team from the very first year. So that's one of the biggest opportunity, I would say, specifically for research-oriented students. And as I said, you might need to travel out of city, province, country, everything would be sponsored by UNBC. We do have a budget of $14 million a year just for research purpose. This is our on-campus accommodation uh, students. And this is an overview of on-campus accommodation. You guys would be having four bedroom apartment. You'd be having your personal bedroom, but you'll be sharing across living room, kitchen and bathroom with three other students. Now let's say for example, if there is a group of four people going together from here, you guys can have their separate apartment as well. Best part for students, and I would say uh, for parents, actually, specifically our Gujarati parents. This is our canteen area. I'm, as you know, students going for bachelors would be quite young, maybe 18 years old or 19 years old. Their parents would always be worried about the food they'll be getting, specifically if they are vegetarian or vegan over there. So we do have full-time Indian chef at UNBC. 
and students can get 365 days, three times a day. If they need vegetarian meal, they can get vegetarian. If they need vegan, they can get vegan on campus. They just need to opt for seven day meal plan. Talking about our programs, students. So currently we are recruiting only for bachelor's degree programs. And if I talk about bachelor's degree, the first one is bachelor's of arts with various major options available like anthropology, economics, English, history, nature-based tourism, political science, and many more. Then we have bachelors of commerce, again, with various major options available, accounting, finance, uh, HR, international business, marketing. The last one here, management information system. That's the rare one. We all know Vancouver is the IT hub of Canada. Just imagine IT plus commerce in British Columbia. That's one of the hot selling program amongst bachelors of commerce students from uh, last two years. And students are definitely happy understanding IT plus commerce together because there are like hundreds of companies of uh, you know, IT firms over there in British Columbia. And that makes the recruitment part more easy. Then we have bachelors of science, again, with various major options available, biology, chemistry, computer science, physics, psychology, and many more. We also have bachelors of civil engineering and bachelors of environmental engineering. So just to recap, guys, we have bachelors of arts, bachelors of commerce, bachelors of science, bachelors of civil engineering, bachelors of environmental engineering at UNBC. If I talk about English language requirements for the programs for ILEX, we would need overall 6.5, no band less than six. For PTE, we would need overall 65, no less than 60. For Duolingo, we would need 105. Now, additionally, if you want to apply at UNBC without ILEX, definitely you can do that. There are certain conditions which you guys would need to fulfill. They are condition number one, if you have studied last five years of education in an English medium school, that is from grade eight to grade 12, if you have studied in English medium school, you definitely fulfill the first condition. Condition number two, your grade 12 is from CBAC board. And condition number three, in grade 12, English as a subject, you have scored more than 65% marks. So if you are the one who is fulfilling all these three requirements, definitely you are eligible to apply to UNBC without any of the English examination. Coming to academic requirements, students for uh, engineering programs, that is bachelor's of civil engineering and bachelor's of environmental engineering, we would need overall 65 percentage in grade 12, no score below 60 percent in any of the subject. For programs like bachelor's of arts, commerce, and science, we would need overall 55 percentage in grade 12, no score below 50 percent in any of the subject. Additionally, I'm sure for the students for of commerce or let's say biology, mathematics would be a big hurdle you can apply at UNBC without mathematics. We do not need mathematics for bachelors of commerce, bachelors of science. Yes, for certain programs we do require, but even without mathematics, you can apply. The only condition would be you would need to study mathematics in the first semester at UNBC without any additional cost, I would say. Second thing over here is, I'm sure you know many of the 12 standard students would be worried about the grade 12 examination cancellation. Many would be happy as well. So even if you have not score, uh, got your official results of uh, grade 12, you can apply at UNBC on the basis of predicted score. You just need to go to your school, ask them for the predicted scores. And on the basis of predicted scores, you can apply at UNBC. Moreover, we generally have application fees of $125. As of now, that's been waived off for a couple of uh, applications, very limited seats available with that. So if you are looking forward to apply at UNBC, definitely go ahead, contact RG International and apply at UNBC today and get you know, the benefits of application fee waiver. Talking about cost of living students, so our on-campus accommodation would cost approximately $5,005 a year. Our seven-day meal plan would cost $5,020 a year. So approximately around $10,000 and your food and accommodation on campus has been sorted. If I talk about fees of undergraduate programs for bachelors of arts, commerce, and science, it is $22,000 a year. For civil engineering and environmental engineering, it's $24,000 a year. Now, as I said earlier, whenever you are comparing any of the fee section, always compare with the right category. Now, if we compare the tuition fees of all the research intensive universities, 
Union, UNBC's minimum fee is $22,000 a year. Simon Fraser's minimum fee is $29,000 a year. University of Victoria is standing at 25 approximately. And University of British Columbia is standing at $39,000 a year. So basically, amongst all the research intensive universities, UNBC is the most cost effective and I would say small university. Small, not in terms of quality of education or campus size, but definitely in terms of uh, you know, number of students we are recruiting each year. Now, there would be a big question mark in many of the students' mind, you know, should I go for a diploma or should I go for a degree in Canada? You might be having some of the relatives in Canada who have done diploma over there. They might be settled down today. But you definitely need to think twice because today the time is different. If they went, if your relative, your friend has went to Canada, let's say five years ago, 10 years ago, the time was different. Today, the time is different. There are certain differences which definitely you should keep in mind before deciding if you wanted to go for diploma or degree in Canada. The first one is earning potential here. So this is uh, the annual income of a man in Canada uh, as per their qualifications. The blue triangles you guys can see there, that's uh, annual income of a man after completing the bachelor's degree in Canada. The orange dots you can see there, that's an annual income of a man after completing the diploma in Canada. So you guys can see in any of the provinces in Canada, blue triangles are on the top. If I specifically talk about British Columbia, the difference would be approximately eight to ten thousand dollars a year between a man who completed bachelor's degree and a man who completed diploma. If I talk about women, the differences are even bigger. For specifically for British Columbia, it can go till fourteen to sixteen thousand dollars a year. Now you might be thinking, you know, it's just a matter of ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year. Why would I study two more years, or you know, why would I pay fees for two more years? Trust me, students, this is just a smaller picture. Bigger picture is yet to come. I'm sure you guys would be looking forward for PR, and you might have friends in Canada, you know, uh, who are running after seven each in islets, eight each in islets, maybe one year experience, two year experience. Why do they run after all these things? Because the lack of points in CRS calculator. So it's very important for you, you know, to know how many points you can claim after diploma in Canada and after degree in Canada. If I talk about two year diploma in Canada, you can claim 91 points in CRS calculator. After a bachelor's degree, you can claim 112 points. This is with spouse. If I talk about without spouse, diploma can give you 98 points and bachelor's degree can give you 120 points. It's a big difference. Additionally, if you are studying in Prince George, British Columbian government would give you six extra points for your PNP application. So that's how British Columbian government is promoting Prince George City to get more and more you know, international students over there. This is the bigger picture students. Now let's assume, you know, if you guys are completing your bachelor's degree, your average age would be somewhere around 23 to 25 years old. And we consider minimum career, uh, you know, would be average career would be 35 years. Any person would work for 35 years in their lifetime. Now, this is the figure which has been declared on the basis of, let's say, for example, if you got job today, you're working with the same company till 35 years, no promotion, no increment, no job change. You're working with the same pay till all 35 years. Even then, the difference between a degree holder and a diploma holder in INR would be approximately three crore 48 lakhs I know. It's a huge amount. And that's the basic amount. I don't believe, you know, that any of you going to Canada would be working with the same pay for all 35 long years. So that's the difference. And now you guys need to think which is the best for you. Some of the high paid jobs in British Columbia, civil engineers, information system analyst, finance manager, HR manager, mathematicians, I told you guys minimum amount of our students has got is $35, but we also had students who have reached till $44 an hour as well. Now, definitely money is not everything. If money is everything, then truck drivers in Canada are getting $80 an hour. That doesn't mean, you know, if you are having a degree or if you are having an international education, you would be a truck driver. Designation would play a big role in your lifestyle as well. After a diploma, definitely you can be any of the assistants, straight people, administrator, after a degree, you can be in any of the management team, any of the consultants, or any of the professionals over there. So students, this is UNBC. I hope uh, the information was helpful. 
So if there is any question, I'll be more than happy to answer that. Well, first of all, uh, I would like to take this opportunity and uh, I would like to mention here the presentation was absolutely fantastic. It was uh, one of the greatest presentation I've seen so far. It was Thank Thank quite you extensive, much. quite informative, right with the right. data, up to mark. Lovely. It was a Thank very you. good presentation. Thank you very much, Chika. Um, so, sir, what, what, uh, Mr. Rajiv, uh, what would you have to say about uh, the presentation? What would you say? Definitely. You know, like all of our students, colleagues, and the counselors, you know, you know, <clears throat> whatever the way Mr. Jay has explained, it was like pretty impressive. And uh, also, like, you know, he covered like every single parts where the parents or the students, you know, have the questions. Let's say if we talk about the Indian meals, you know, right. or like a food and like, you know, so this is something like, you know, small questions they have like uh, always their parents are having. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, glad that, uh, you know, he covered in the short time, mostly every single small thing he tried to cover up. But still, let's go ahead with the all like a questions and answers. Uh, they may have, you know, uh, Jigar. Yeah. Like, so thank you. Thank you very much, Rajivri. But that was yeah. like, we really, really appreciate that. You know, thank, Mr. thank you. Yeah. Yes. So now uh, we would like to go for the, uh, let's say, question and answer session. So I would like to, uh, you know, start by myself for, by asking mm -hmm. the question. Question right. number first. Uh, I, I'm keen to know uh, if everything is up to mark in my application, like all my documentation, all the details that has been asked by the university. Generally, how many days or how many weeks it'll take to get the offer from the university? Right, so uh, Jiga, actually, you know, the process of UNBC is a bit different. So students will be getting first admissibility email, right? They can get that uh, within three to four business days after the application. Admissibility email would confirm their admission that yes, you guys do have a seat, you guys are eligible for this program, the next step would be paying the tuition deposit. So our minimum tuition deposit is 7,500 Canadian dollars. Once the student pays that, then we'll be issuing offer letter and LOA for that particular student. So it's a bit different that, you know, we are not issuing offer letter from the very beginning. We are definitely sharing admissibility email and on the basis of that, they can pay their fees and after paying their fees, they can get offer letter and LOA. So that would take, you know, approximately a week after the payment reflects in the bank of the university. Okay. Okay. Well noted. Okay. So uh, that was uh, the only question I, I uh, you know, got clicked in my mind. Okay. Now I would like to go over to the students and the team and, the, uh, and to the, all the people who are watching us live right now. So guys, whomsoever is watching us live, you uh, are free to ask all of your questions right down there in the chat. I will request uh, every one of you, if you guys have any question, please come forward and please, uh, you know, put it there in your chat box and we will try to uh, answer um, all of them right here while being on live. So guys, if you have a question, please. I can please see, Jigga, there is a question someone asked on our Facebook live page, mm -hmm. all right, that in the management information system program, is the maths are required? Or not? Maths is required, but if you do not have mathematics in grade 12, as I said, you know, uh, you can still apply at UNBC, but you will be studying mathematics in first semester without any additional cost. So how it works, you know, uh, definitely, if you consider Indian education system here, in commerce or let's say in biology, 99% of students would not have taken mathematics. And that is where they struggle. And we are considering that, considering that particular point as well, they would need to study mathematics in the first semester because Canadian education system requires mathematics. So we are uh, providing that mathematics subject without any additional cost for those students in the first semester. Right. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. I have one more question here. Someone is writing that what about PT? Let's see the student has uh, you know very good score in PT. Uh, but still it will be considered as a like um, non-SDS application, 
right? So how will right. be the visa successor issue? Do you recommend that students should, uh, you know, like those who are having a really good score in PT, that they should go ahead with the non-SDS application and apply for the visa application? Definitely. Uh, see, uh, Rajiv Bhai, uh, if it's a matter of PTE, so as far as visas are concerned, right, there right. would be many other factors. It's not mm -hmm. just English language requirements, uh, you know, playing the big role in the visa success ratio. But mm -hmm. if they're all the documentation are pretty good and the PT score is pretty good, definitely, you know, because if we see at the visa process system, the visa process are always linked with the DLI of the university. Right. right. The stronger the DLI of the university, the higher the visa success ratio. And as far as UNBC's uh, DLI number history is concerned, we have seen very rare number of visa rejections because we are taking only very rare applications. You will not find, you know, the bunch of students at UNBC or you, you know, you will not find all kind of crowd. Definitely the ones who are related, focused on the career, they will be at UNBC. So we are recruiting very limited number and that is the reason we are having very high visa success ratio. So yes, I would suggest to that particular student, definitely go ahead if other documentations are pretty good, definitely you should go ahead uh, for the visa thing. Excellent, excellent. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, uh, one person has asked about uh, the master's program. Uh, Mr. Jay, would you like to give him a word from your side? What is the status sure. of the master's program at uh, so UNBC. basically uh, for UNBC students, you know, for international students, I would say we have only one master's program as of now that is MBA. So the reason I didn't include an MBA in our presentation is we are currently closed for 2021 intake and we are not yet open for 2022 intake as well. Also, we are not sure if we'll be opening or not because let's say for example, when we open for 2021, we have large number of applications and we are not able to, you know, uh, give seats to each and every student. So definitely we are trying to give seats to those students, uh, you know, who applied in 21 for the 22. So if there are seats limited and if there are seats remaining, we'll be opening for 2022 as well. So as of now, there are no master's degree program. We can uh, go ahead accordingly and we only are recruiting for bachelor's degree program. Okay, uh, there's someone has asked in the Q&A section that, uh, well, it, it's, a, it's a regarding the backlog, uh, but I would like to answer it by my side on your behalf, Mr. Jai, that you see we are going for the bachelor's degree. So specifically, there is no backlog requirement comes in a scenario, because if you clear your higher, higher secondary school, then only you'll be admitted to the uh, bachelor's degree. So as such, there is no uh, backlog things even, uh, you know, it's, it need to be discussed because you have to clear your higher secondary, then, then you will be admitted to the bachelor's degree. So the backlog is definitely, um, you know, out not of- covering in picture. No, no, not covering in picture, yes. Okay, uh, guys, anyone who is having any sort of question, please come forward and ask. Seems your presentation was very good. That no one is actually having any question. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. That, that, that's what no, I, I mean, you covered the, you you covered the whole thing. You covered the whole thing. I mean, I was by myself. Like, okay, that's the only one question I wanted to ask about the offer letter. Okay, right. of course. Very good question. Um, okay. Open boards. Yes. Yeah. Do we accept yeah. open boards like NIOS or something You're like right. that? We definitely accept open board as far as the school supports for verification. You know, mm -hmm. so basically in our application process, there comes a time when student would need to verify the transcript. School would need to send the courier to uh, UNBC. So there are certain schools in Open Board who supports this, and there are certain schools who do not support this. So you would need to check that with your school. If your school is ready to support in the verification process, definitely you are welcome at UNBC. Okay, lovely. I have one question, Mr. Jay, that like, you know, I know that we are not running uh, MBA program as of now for the uh, 21 intake and for the 22 also, like we are, we have not opened yet, but mm -hmm. there's a student who's asking like, let's see if in future, if they think about applying in MBA program, do you guys require any certain work experience after the graduations to apply for the professional MBA? Yes, we do require. So as you know, the topic is on, I would go through the entry requirements of MBA. 
So yes. for MBA in the bachelor's degree, last two years. So it doesn't necessarily have to be three years degree or compulsory four years degree. So any of the degree you have, last two years, you would need uh, or 60 percentage. Then comes the experience requirement. You would need minimum three years of managerial work experience. Three right? years of managerial That's work experience. Managerial work experience. Perfect. And you would need three reference letters as well. One from your educational institute, one from your colleague, and one from right. your supervisor. Right. Right. And English language requirement would remain the same. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Um, Yes, I have one more question, Mr. Jay. This, someone is asking this. What if maths is not there in the 12th grade? Is there any extra math subject? Yes, there is math subject in the first semester, but the good part is you do not have to pay anything extra to study that mathematics. So what generally Canadian education system concerns, uh, you know, any of the foreign education, that is, uh, if you're going, let's say, for example, bachelors of commerce, you'll be having five electives. I'm giving a random example, right? Total 25 subjects, five electives. So if you do not have mathematics in grade 12, you'll be getting only four electives and 21 core subjects, right? So that's a part of the program. You don't have to pay anything extra. So even without mathematics, you can apply. Perfect. Yes, we have the answer right now. Okay. Uh, so, uh... Sir, do we have uh, sir, uh, do we have any uh, more question? Because I guess, Mr. Jai, you have fantastically covered almost everything, like the living, right. the the campus scenario, the job pers uh, perspective, the, uh, the the wage rate after graduation, housing, fee structure requirement. Yes. It's 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 the whole uh, yeah. thing, I guess. And now, I, all I just can imagine is that student can actually imagine. Uh, living there, yeah. that's all which living is there, yeah. So, yes. definitely, even if you know if someone is uh watching this video after the live has been ended, and if they have any questions, definitely you guys can contact uh, RG International, they are one of our authorized agent partners, and definitely will be in the right hands. So, definitely go ahead and you know contact RG International to know more about UNBC or any of the questions, and they'll be able to help you. Yep. So, thank, thank you so, so much, much for your kind words. Um, so I guess uh, so far we we done with the Q and A session as well. So I guess I'm going to okay. Just a second. There's one so question. Popped up. In. Yeah, I've completed my bachelor's in IT. I'm trying for MBA. Will I get to study math? Okay. All right. So you so, can read uh, it. Being a panelist, right, please right, go ahead. Right. So basically, for MBA, there is no particular requirement for mathematics. Right. But uh, for MBA, as you have done, you have completed your IT, as I mentioned, you know, entry requirements. If you have three years of manager work experience, if you have scored 60% in last two years of your bachelor's, and if you have English language requirement that is IELTS overall 6.5, no less than six, or PT 65, no less than 60, then definitely you can apply at MBA whenever it opens. I surely update Team RG International when we are open for MBA. You can go ahead with your application. Perfect. Super. Yes. So, guys, uh, still, uh, let me ask you all one last time. Uh, if you guys still have any qu uh, question, please come forward and ask, because uh, I will be concluding uh, the session. How many hours of study time will I have per day? Okay. So uh, over there, study time would depend on the uh, you know, subjects you take per semester. So it's not like uh, Indian education system, you know, where there is a fixed set of subjects uh, in the university. Over there, you would be having an option. You can select you know, three subjects per semester, let's say four subjects per semester. Or if you are too intelligent, too smart, definitely you can go ahead with five subjects as well, right? So it would depend on how many subjects you are selecting. And if I'm not wrong, it would take an average four hours a week, right, per one subject. So if you are taking four subjects in one semester, so it would be approximately 16 hours of study per week. And timetable would be announced before the semester. So there can be chances, you know, that you would be having like three subjects a day or let's say two subjects a day or four subjects, all four different days. So it would depend on which subjects you select. Okay, okay, so let me see. Okay, so I guess uh, that is 
it and that is all. So I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, you, Mr. Jay. Thank you so much for taking our time uh, for us and in, you know guiding us uh, and our students and giving us the information about UNVC. I would also like to thank Mr. Rajiv for taking out uh, his time from his busy schedule and you know uh, being one of our panelists here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, guys. And Jigar, one more thing. I would just like to add, you know, our contact details, uh, yes. our helpline number. Uh, so any of the students, even later on, if you would like to connect us, so you can always call us on our helpline number, which is 8108-006-005. With this one number, you can connect any of our branch across India. And wherever the nearest branch is available, you can always visit us. And thank you so much, Mr. Jay, you know, for being here and help us out, with, you know, for my team, my students, and we're definitely looking forward to a really good recruitment. And uh, me or my team or Jigar will get back to you soon. You know, if we really have like, you know, a few more questions. Yeah, definitely. Anytime. Thank you. But thank I really you very much. Your time, man. Yeah. I really appreciate thank that. You. I Thank have mentioned uh, the contact detail of the RG International, so uh, I'm sure that, the, that it's very easy to find us on this number. You can just select the nearest uh, location and your, your call will be transferred to us and we will be there to assist you guys. So thank you everyone for being a part of this uh, informative webinar and uh, hope you have a great evening further. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much, guys. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Bye, Bye. Mr. Jay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.